Hi there guys, welcome back again. Um, if you've been watching the recent videos I've been doing, I've been talking about some general kind of principles of studying and thinking about history. A little bit of histori historiography, beg your pardon, a little bit of theory. Um, and today um, I want to continue from the last video where I was talking about Marxist historiography to talking a little bit um, about this notion of the kind of the great man in history and how that's been kind of um, subverted and um, challenged in the last sort of um, three or four decades, uh, perhaps even longer. Hmm, look into it. Um, okay, so if we go way back to um, the 18th and 19th centuries and you look at the kind of history that was being written then, history then um, is not what you call a kind of professionalised academic discipline, particularly. It's more a um, the kind of like the hobby of, of rich gentlemen, um, and throughout the nineteenth century, when um, people like kind of uh, Thomas Carlyle start to write um, history, then we start to move towards something um, slightly more um, academic. Um, by academic, I mean something within the institutions of academia, where there are um, a kind of there's a, a system of peer reviewing of findings, where you're you've got uh, a community of scholars looking at each other's evidence and questioning it, challenging it, and then there's debate. And this is, you know, obviously very healthy for kind of academic discourse. Um, prior to that, you've you've really got the kind you've really got the um, more of a kind of a storytelling, if you will. And historians, um, what historians there there were really in the early modern period is when we start to see it as a kind of a, a specific discipline. Really, the men, um, and it was almost exclusively men, um, not if I wanted to make some broadly sexist point, but it was almost exclusively men, who would try to co collect you know, stories, if you will. And these stories tended to feature, as they inevitably do with people, stories of individuals, and normally great individuals, you know, the likes of you know, Charlemagne or William the Conqueror or Julius Caesar or, or whomsoever. And so... They, they tended to be, there was a kind of a natural tendency before the kind of the academization of history to write the subject from the perspective of the great individual. And there and there's an implicit assumption in that that great individuals are the people who make historical change happen. Now I'm not for a moment suggesting that this is completely untrue, but it's only part of a truth. And in the previous um podcast I was talking about how um, Marxist historians, really in um, from the, the first half of the 20th century, were the, the people who really kind of dominated uh, much academic discourse on history. And the thing that they um, came up with, really, or the idea that they um, pursued, was this notion of history from below, that um, the uh, anonymous figures in history, the, the peasants, the serving um, staff in great country houses, the dock workers, the miners, the foot soldiers, the no, the the unreported nobodies and nothings who really are kind of anonymous to history. They're the people that kind of make historical change happen, and even if they're not actively making historical change happen, that their stories and their um, life circumstances um, are more interesting and tell us more and help explain more than the lives of people such as, I don't know, take for example Oliver Cromwell. Well, there's definitely something to be said for this, that um, history from below uh, was a, a, a very refreshing change, because you can imagine the guys, um, the, the likes of E.P. Thompson and Christopher Hill, and the people who uh, attended university in the 50s and 60s who um, admired them, the um, standard of uh, historical um, learning that they had done at school um, would have been kind of roughly equivalent to um, that delivered out by a man in a mortarboard with a, a long black cloak, a cane, a mean piece of chalk to fire to the back of the classroom and a ruler upon which one learned the names of kings and queens. And so it was immensely stifling and frustrating and irritating and, uh, and the, the kind of thing that you would normally seek to reject. And the idea of history from below, as articulated in E.B. Thompson's Making of the English Working Class, as I mentioned in the last video, a great book, go out and get it. Um, not on Amazon, though, buy it from a proper bookshop. 
Um, th these kinds of ideas were immensely popular and a breath of fresh air. And it's no surprise that they they uh, dominated really academic discourse up until you know the, the 1970s at least. But what tends to happen, uh, what tended to happen towards the end of the 70s, is that new discourses, new ways of thinking about um, uh, history and about exploring history, uh, began to threaten um, threaten the dominance of Marxism. Um, and this is what we call, and I'm going to address this in the next video because there's not time now, the linguistic turn in history. Um, and it is where new um, ideas such as post-structuralism and post-modernism really came in to um, challenge history departments, almost to the point where history as an academic di discipline was in, um, in, in real doubt, in real question as to whether it would, it would continue as a, as a concept. Now, um, I get ahead of myself, but a great book to read on this is In Defence of History by Richard J. Evans. I'll put a link at the bottom of this video for anyone who wants to get it. Might have to be Amazon, forgive me. Um, but check it out because it, it helps to explore the kind of different, um, the, the, the kind of the controversy that rages between um, more orthodox approaches to history, empiricism, and things like that. And at the other end of the spectrum, uh, postmodern approaches, again, which we will talk about uh, in due course. Um, Anyway, a bit, bit of a ramble this one, so I hope you'll forgive me. But um, uh, remember to subscribe to this podcast. We're going to continue putting uh, more and more discussion, particularly of historiography at the moment, um, out there. I said podcast, I meant videocast, which bring, brings me to my next point. If you want stuff that is just specifically related to um, sub modern history subject areas, your Hitler's, your Stalin's, that kind of thing, Go to www.explaininghistory.com, get onto the podcast, subscribe to it there. That's where I keep most of my general history content equally as fascinating as my video stuff. Um, you can also contact me at info at explaininghistory.com. Love to hear your comments, love to hear what you've got to say. And uh, thanks once again for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next video.